Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin. Welcome back to my channel. So I think that the number one most requested video I've gotten since I started my channel four years ago is Caitlin, we need your top 10 Disney Channel ships. And this is a video I've put off making for a while now because I feel like it does change a lot. Like there's always new shows coming and going and I feel like I have a lot more than just 10 favorites. And so I figured why not go big or go home? Instead of doing a top 10 list, let's just do a top 20 list. And so that's what we're doing today. Before we jump right into it though, I did just want to mention that this is only going to be for Disney Channel original series. I'm sure I'll do a decom ship list eventually. And while the ordering of this list may change over time I still think that these are like the main ships on Disney Channel that are like my just all-time favorites and so with all that being said let's just jump right into it couple of questions do we double up on the shampoos this isn't even half a head's worth okay never mind moving away from the bathroom topic are you going to tell Ben about the kiss no good I mean Ben's my best friend and you obviously wish it hadn't happened yes Right. By wish it hadn't happened, you mean because of Ben? Or me kissing you give you nightmares? I don't want to hurt Ben. And I don't want to hurt Danielle. So let's just forget it ever happened and you can stay as far away from me as possible. And what if I don't want to? No, never mind. Forget it. So coming in at number 20 is Sky and Sean from The Lodge, and I think that their story is done really well in the first season. They meet, it's love at first sight, but then, oh no, Sean's got a girlfriend. And then Sky ends up fake dating, turned into real dating, his best friend, but then Sean and Sky still have feelings for each other. And it just turned into this really great love triangle because I always felt that even though Ben was probably the better choice, like he was the better guy, Sean was the one that she liked more from the start. And so she picks Sean in season two, everything is great, until she starts to backtrack and she's like, oh no, maybe I should have picked Ben. And it's just like, I hate it here. And so I love them, but I don't like how their story was handled in season two or how they ended. But they still have so many cute moments together, especially in the first season and when they start dating in the second. And so that's why they are one of my favorite ships from Disney Channel. And when we came in here, Mike's face was priceless. I don't know if he was red from anger or from sucking on his straw too hard. I'm good either way. <laughs> And when Jenna saw you pull my chair out for me? Oh, yeah, not pull it away when you sat down. <laughs> she was thinking, that's the guy for me. <laughs> oh, hey, this will drive him crazy. To you, my dear. No, to you, my dear. <laughs> Does anybody actually talk like this? What do I know? You're my first girlfriend, real or otherwise. <laughs> uh, what are you guys doing? Isn't it obvious? We're having a romantic smoothie so Mike and Jenna get jealous. Um, Mike and Jenna aren't even here anymore. Oh. Hmm. I, I guess they left. I didn't even notice. <laughs> Neither did I. Uh, guess we'll have to come back here tomorrow night. It's a date. <laughs> So number 19, we have Jasmine and Logan from I Didn't Do It, and I feel like they are one of those ships that I feel like is a little bit underrated, but that's probably because I feel like I Didn't Do It is very underrated. Their story is just so adorable. They do the whole Can't Buy Me Love thing where they fake date in the beginning, but then it's revealed that Jasmine really does like him, but she keeps it a secret, and then she starts dating someone else, and then we find out that Logan does like her too, and then it's just this whole thing of us like waiting for them to finally get together, and then they finally do in the last episode, and it's just perfect. They're also friends to lovers, and you guys know how much I love a good trope. And I just feel like this ship is perfect. Like there's nothing wrong with them. They're definitely one of the most unproblematic Disney Channel ships. I just wish that I didn't do it, didn't get canceled. So we could have gotten to see more of their story unfold. Thelonious Jagger? Are you kidding? That is a great name. I love that name. You do? Yes. Well, my grandparents didn't. And they're like, that's a ridiculous name. We're calling him TJ. <laughs> so I've been TJ since I was three days old. Is there anything else you want to know? Is there anything else you want to tell me? Yeah. Is there anything you want to tell me?
So at number 18, we have TJ and Cyrus from Andy Mac, and I'm sure people are going to be mad with how far back they are on my list, but here's the thing. I just feel like they weren't developed nearly enough to be able to bring them any higher up on this list. It's hard for me to compare them to some of these other ships on this list just because I feel like we didn't get to see enough of them in like a romantic relationship, but I still love them with all my heart. I love how they developed like a genuine friendship at first and then us as fans started shipping them just because they were so cute together, but then in the back of my mind it was like, are they actually going to make them happen though? And then they they did and it was adorable and it just left me wanting more. The fact that we never got to see them as a couple or even just for them to say the words out loud makes me really sad. I understand that their relationship was still very new by the time that the show ended but that's the part that I don't like. Like I wish that they could have started developing their romantic relationship earlier on in the show and so we could have gone to see them together by the end of it. But I still love them, they're adorable and definitely one of the most important ships to ever come from Disney Channel. I want to try it again. The straightforward thing. Why? I think I did it wrong. You go first this time. Sure. Okay. I like you. Like the way you used to like me, but don't anymore. That was very straightforward. Well done. Thanks. Is it still my turn? No, I'll go. Really? Now it's your turn. That's it. That's all I wanted to tell you in case you ever change your mind. Buffy. I've never changed my mind. So as much as I love Tyrus, I would have to say that my favorite ship from Andy Mac is Buffy and Marty, and so that's why they are number 17. I feel like the main reason why I like them more is probably just because of how further developed their relationship is. We get to see so much more of their relationship as a couple and how they would work together, and they really are just perfect for one another. I feel like they can be a little bit awkward at times, like rewatching that scene from the last episode, I was like... I feel like this is a little bit cringy, but they are just such young actors that I feel like I can't blame them for that. And also I remember watching that moment in the show and I didn't feel that way at all. I thought that that scene was so adorable. And I just love how the relationship stemmed from friendship as well. And then they had that breakup sort of thing where Buffy turned him down and it just broke my heart. But then they found their way back to each other and it was everything I could have hoped for. And before I move on, I just wanted to mention that I feel like the only other Andy Mack ship that probably would have made this list if I was doing like a top 30 or something would be Bex and Bowie, just because they are so adorable and very much in love. Well. This is it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish that there was some way that we could... There's no going back. Come on, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, at least Ursula will report that you've been eliminated and you can go start a new life. Yeah. I, I hear Canada's great bacon. Yeah. <laughs> Stay safe. Babe. <laughs> So number 16 we have Casey and Brett from Casey Undercover and I've actually been talking about them a lot on my channel recently and so I'm sorry if you're sick of hearing me talk about them but they're just perfect and I love them. Casey and Brett have such an interesting dynamic to them and I think that that's why I love them so much. They had to fake date at first as well but instead of them like sort of liking each other in the beginning they just completely hated each other and then Brett starts dating Casey's best friend Marissa but then that doesn't end up working out and then that's when we find out that Casey and Brett do have feelings for each other and everything is fine and good until we find out that Brett actually isn't one of the good guys he's one of the bad guys and then it's just the recipe for the perfect ship. And I just feel like no other love interest really came close to what Casey and Brett had on the show and the fact that their love story only existed throughout the first season is so sad because we really deserve so much more of them. But either way, they will always be one of my favorite ships from Disney. Sabía que eras vos. Lo sabías. Porque querías que fuera yo. Quería decirte que me ha encantado eso que me has dicho antes en el camerino. Y quería agradecértelo. No tienes que agradecerme nada, Shh. digo yo. Yo quiero agradecértelo. Y no se me ocurre mejor forma que esta.
So number 15, we have Violetta and Diego from Violetta. And I just wanted to say for my fellow Violetta fans out there that this is the only Violetta ship on this list. And I don't know what it is about this show, like I love it, but the ships just didn't really do it for me, at least not the canon ones. Like I liked Fede and Ludmilla, but not until the last episode, like I really didn't ship them until the very last episode of the show. And I liked Maxi and Natty as well, but part of me wishes that Maxi and Ludmi could have been canon like they had originally planned in the beginning. But enough about the other ships, let's talk about Violetta and Diego, which is the ship I actually like enough to include on this list. I recently went on a whole rant as to why I like Violetta and Diego more than Violetta and Leon in my Enemies to Lovers video, so if you haven't seen that yet, I'll put it in the info card. It's funny because I remember liking them when I was watching the show and being like, okay, I know that they aren't gonna last, but they are super cute. And then it wasn't until after I finished the show that they became my favorite ship because it was like once I didn't have them anymore, then I realized how much I loved them. I also think that while I was watching the show, I just hated Diego so much in the beginning because of how pushy he was that it was just hard for me to ship it. And this is a big spoiler for the show, so if you haven't seen it yet, you can skip ahead a little bit, but basically Ludmilla blackmails Diego into making Violetta fall in love with him. She finds out about this and then is heartbroken and breaks up with him. But here's the thing, he actually ended up falling in love with her throughout this whole process. And so they're just both heartbroken by the end of it. And then I'm heartbroken as a result. And that's one of the main reasons why I've never really been on board with Diego and Fran. Like they did have their moments, but just imagine being so in love with someone and going through all of this and then not that long after you start dating their best friend. Like, that just seems so weird to me. And then also I just always felt like they always gave Fran Violetta seconds, which makes me sad as well. I just felt like she deserves so much better. Also, they kept their relationship a secret for just way too long. It ended up getting super annoying and was honestly just really rude on their part. Yeah, all of that to say that I love Violetta and Diego. They're my favorite ship from the show and that is all. I don't know why you watch these wizard celebrity gossip shows. They're all rubbish. Goblins make bad life decisions. Yep, we get it. Well, you're gonna like it today. I heard I'm on it. It's probably Wizard of the Year stuff. We are gonna look so cute at that banquet together. Oh, wait. I got you a corsage to give to me. Here you go. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's perfect. How did you know I like corsages? <laughs> So next up is Alex and Mason from Wizards, and this ship was number one on my fan voted for list, so I already know how much you guys love them, and I love them too, they are super cute. It's hard for me to summarize Alex and Mason's relationship because I feel like there really is a lot to it. They have a super adorable meet cute, and then Mason starts acting really weird, we're not sure why, and then it's revealed that he is a werewolf, but it's okay because Alex is a wizard. And then they go through a lot of ups and downs, Disney Channel really put them through it. There's the whole love triangle thing with the beast tamer, and then when Mason gets turned back into a wolf, and then one wanders off into the woods and Alex is just left heartbroken or when Alex decides to give up being a wizard but then that means that she can't be with Mason anymore and it's just is such a sad moment but then it all works out in the end because they do end up together and happily and very much in love and I've mentioned this a few times but I just felt like Mason was a little bit annoying near the end of the show like he was a little bit too needy and not giving Alex her space which I didn't like but overall they're a really good ship 10 out of 10 I love them so you thought you'd get some alone time with Sky then ding dong it's Sean how lovely what do you want? Same thing as you, not to be in there. Ben, why don't you trust me? You know why? Okay, I admit it. I may have mentioned the gold to Gil. How could you do that? Splinter, don't be such a baby. You know I wouldn't have if you hadn't run off to Sky with the map. This again, why is it such a big deal to you? Because I just know I'm a big joke to everyone. That's not true. You know, I've only ever wanted to be one of the group. When we were in the cave, you didn't treat me like I was Sean's ex or evil Danielle. I felt like I meant something to you. Look, Danielle. Why hurt yourself chasing after Sky when you don't have to? Coming in at number 13 is Ben and Danielle from The Lodge, and I feel like I hardly ever get to talk about Ben and Danielle, but they are definitely my favorite ship from the show. I just love them so much. They really started to bond in the second season when Skye picks Sean, and then Danielle enlists Ben's help to find the gold, and then they start to develop feelings for each other, and it's just really sweet. Obviously, Ben did still sort of have feelings for Skye at the time, but I just feel like he deserves to be happy with someone like Danielle who didn't choose his best friend over him. I mean, she did date Sean at first, but I feel like that's different because there was no like love triangle situation, and they didn't really start to bond until afterwards and once they like got to know each other better. I really wish we could have gotten to see more of them on the show. Like I feel like their relationship was kind of rushed and we didn't really get to see much of them, but I still love them, their end game, and that just makes me really happy. Well you gotta make me earn it. But I thought you were all upset because I was like too competitive. That's not why I was upset. 
I was upset because I'm just as competitive. Every time we hang out, you beat me at something. Basketball, treehouse, horse. Cowbell. Almost forgot about that one. <laughs> I thought when you took me to the ballpark, I figured that was my moment to shine. <laughs> oh, you wanted to impress me. <laughs> yeah, I did, and I'm gonna. Ooh. But it doesn't count unless you're trying just as hard as I am. Don't ever turn off your competitive fire. It's one of the things I like most about you. So number 12, we have Maddie and Josh from Love and Maddie, and this is another ship that I talk about a lot on my channel, so I'm sure this one comes to nobody's surprise, but I will go to my grave saying that Maddie should have picked Josh because that's just the way it is. Maddie and Josh met recently after Maddie and Diggy's breakup. He was Liv's new co-star, but then he started developing feelings for Maddie, and then once she gave him a chance, they were just super adorable together until Diggy found out, came back, and forced her to choose between the two of them, and then because she has history with Diggy, she picked Diggy, which just made me so upset. I could honestly see Maddie and Diggy breaking up down the line just because Diggy is the worst human, and so once Maddie realizes that, she would definitely break up with him. And then I could see, like, her past crossing with Josh again, and then they get back together, and Josh is just like, I knew this wasn't the end of us, you know? I don't really have much else to say about them just because they were so short-lived, but I just love them so much and I always will. Abono. Ay, me encanta. No, qué hermoso. Eso es abono y tiene olor. ¿Qué hará? Sí, es hermoso. Seguro que me lo dejó Guillermo. Es un código entre nosotros. Porque el primer día que yo lo seguí y él se dio cuenta, yo le conté que estaba yendo a comprar abono. Y él me dijo lo mismo cuando él me estaba siguiendo. Sí. No es un divino, es un divino. Es un divino, sí, pero eso no deja de ser abono, tiene olor y es feo. Sí. No me parece tan divino. No, pero es fundamental para las plantas el abono. Claro. Okay. Es una flor? metáfora de nuestra historia de amor. Y ah. la flor es mía, me lo regaló mi Giovanni. Ay, me encanta. Okay. Es un poeta, me encanta. Me encanta que te encante. <risa> no, yo, justamente yo estaba diciendo que me encanta la flor. La rosa me, me gusta mucho. A mí también me encanta, sí. Y tengo que irme a estudiar, eh, a estudiar. Eh, ok. ¿Y dónde hemos quedado? ¿Qué estabas diciendo? Me estabas diciendo que te había gustado la rosa, solamente la rosa. Sí, no, solamente la rosa. Y la verdad es que me gusta mucho. Aunque me di cuenta de que está llena de espinas. ¿Estás bien? Sí, no. Gracias, ya, ya, ya estoy muy bien, olvídate de eso, muy bien. Es imposible olvidarse de ti. Desde que te iba a bailar, no dejo de pensar en Giovanna. ¿Quieres salir conmigo? So we have a newer ship that just recently graced this list with its presence, that is Chiara and Guillermo from Bia. Chiara and Guillermo fall in love in the second season of Bia, and they were honestly what kept me watching the show for a while. Like, Bia and Manuel were on the rocks, and there honestly wasn't really anything else going on at the time, and so I'd be like, do I want to watch the new episode tonight? And then I remember Chiara and Guillermo and be like, oh yes, I gotta, for them. Basically, Guillermo auditions for Daisy's dance competition as a masked dancer, and then Chiara just falls in love with him on the spot, and so she creates this online persona just to showcase that she loves him, but then she finds out that Guillermo is an employee at Likes, which is like her rival network to the one that she's at, and they're just like, overall like kind of scummy like they've done some stuff to her in particular that have like just scammed her over completely and so she's a reason not to trust him but then she ends up giving him a chance and they're just so adorable together that is until marcus finds out and then blackmails him into breaking up with her which just broke my heart but it was also just like such a good scene like when he's being forced to break up with her i'm like this is so sad i am so upset because this is my favorite ship right now and they're just crumbling before my eyes but also i was very entertained because it was such a good scene <laughs> But don't worry, because everything got fixed through dancing, which is a reference that doesn't really work very well in English, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. The moral of the story is I love Chiara and Guillermo a lot, and I really hope that we get a third season, so we'll get to see more of them. You really know how to zombie dance. <laughs> how many, uh, how many zombie proms have you been to? Yes. Yes? Yes, I'll go study with you. Well, that's, that's great because, I mean, people sort of indicated that it was lame, but like, I don't really care what people think and uh, I'm nuts about you and I, I just want to make you happy.
So number 10 we have Justin and Juliet from Wizards. This is another ship that I talk about a lot just because I feel like they're one of the most unproblematic ships to ever come from the network. They just melt my heart every time they're together. They're literally a parody of Romeo and Juliet. Like you can't get more romantic than that. And then just the whole thing with the competing sub shops and then her being a vampire and him being a wizard, but then they end up making it work because they're just so in love. Well that is until Juliet gets kidnapped by the mummy and then Justin works so hard to save her just to have her hobble off as an old lady into the woods. It's just their story is so sad but also so good and then the way that they find their way back to each other and have that wonderful happy ending that they deserved just makes me so happy and honestly I just feel like their relationship was always overshadowed by Alex and Mason which makes me sad because I feel like they were the better ship and so yeah that's why they're number 10 on this list I love them and I wish we could have gone to see more of them on the show Tony there is nothing going on between me and Hayden you can't say no to the kiss cam you just couldn't say no to the kiss cam could you <laughs> Chad not now I trusted you, Sonny. Okay, I trusted you to use my seats responsibly. And instead, I wake up this morning to find this. The cover of Twin Week. <laughs> Who is this guy? The love of my life. Then why is she kissing you? I don't know. I told you it was the kiss cam. Sonny. It was the kiss cam. <laughs> told you it was the kiss camp. Right. So next up we have Sunny and Chad from Sunny with a Chance and there's just no way I could have made this list without including Sunny and Chad. I think if 12 year old me were to make this list they would definitely be number one because they were without a doubt my favorite ship from my childhood. They were also the best haters to lovers to come from Disney Channel which we talked about quite recently but I also feel like they did the will they won't they storyline really well as well. They were on opposite shows. Chad's was the rivals to Sunny's and so they were supposed to hate each other but you could tell from the beginning that there was absolutely something there. And then we got the wonderful fake date episode which might be one of my favorite ones from the series and I just feel like it was obvious from that point on that they were just meant to be together. And then of course the scene where Chad asks Sunny out for the first time is just one of my favorite moments from Disney Channel as well and so yep overall I just love Chani a lot and they will always be one of my favorite ships from the network. Y tengo algo para proponerte. No. No, ¿qué si no sabe qué te iba a decir? Sí, es obvio. ¿Qué tal si cantamos juntos? No, no, no. Yo solo canté como Felicity, como Nina me da vergüenza. Y bueno, pero lo importante es que te animaste. Y sabes que ya no importa si escribe Felicity o si canta Nina. Esa sos vos. Es tu voz, son tus ideas. Y diste un gran paso mostrando quién sos. En su momento creaste Felicity porque la necesitabas. Ahora déjala ir. A lo mejor deberías escribir vos. No me cambies de tema, te conozco tanto. ¿Para qué? Que la cámara no puede ver. Dale, no te voy a poder dar ningún beso acá. Bueno, uno. quizás solo uno, pero bueno, estoy haciendo algunos cálculos. No. no te rías de mí. Y ahí... Un solo lugar donde la cámara no nos puede tomar. ¿Dónde es eso? Sí, pero... acá, justo acá. No, pero sí. No, 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 Catón, Catón. Es que el ángulo de inclinación de la cámara no nos llega, ¿verdad? ¿No respiro? No. Quititos, juntitos, ahí no pasa nada. Está ok. So number eight, we have Nina and Gaston from Soy Luna, and they're a ship that moves around a lot on my list. Sometimes they're at number two, other times they're at number eight. I just feel like sometimes I really love them, other times I'm like, do I really love them that much? I don't know, I don't get it either. <laughs> I just feel like their story is so heartwarming, how like the nerdy shy girl is crushing on the popular guy, but she feels like he'll never notice her, and then her online persona blows up and he falls in love with her because of who she is and not even knowing who she is. And then Nina and Gaston become closer in the real world and he finds out that Nina is Felicity and it's just everything he could have wanted, and they get together and they're in love and it just makes me so happy. But my main complaint with Gaston and Nina is, well, <laughs> Yes, that they broke up in the end, but also that I feel like the show never gave us enough of them. I always felt like they were sort of forgotten about on the show, especially after they got together, which just makes me sad because they definitely were one of the best ships from the show. And so, yeah, I just feel like right now they're off at Oxford together, being happy and very much in love. Holden! Wow, you're um, really encased in plaster there, aren't you? <laughs> You know, for a second, I thought that you were coming up with a lot of weird ways to blow me off. No, nope, this really is my life. <laughs> but, but why are you here? And why do you have a pizza? I mean, I know it's not the fancy date that we had planned, but any time that I get to spend with you is the most special time I can imagine. 
So next up we have Livin Holden from Livin Maddie and this is another one that I'm sure comes to nobody's surprise because I love them a lot and I definitely make that known. Their story does bug me a little bit, like it starts off, they haven't seen each other in a few years but it's obvious that they do still like each other. But then Liv's best friend Andy asks him out and he says yes and so now there's like this really weird love triangle that just kind of came out of nowhere and don't get me wrong, I didn't hate it, like it created some good drama but I just felt like it was really weird and kind of came out of nowhere. And then Holden and Andy don't end up working out because they literally aren't compatible whatsoever but then Liv and Holden can't date because Liv is like well I'm not gonna date my best friend's ex until Andy's like I literally do not care and so then they finally get together and it's everything well that is until they break up and it's very sad but then Holden does come back in the fourth season and it's hinted at that they do get together in New York which is just everything I'm sure they are such a power couple there and yeah overall I just feel like Holden made some questionable decisions when it came to their relationship but overall you can't just not love them. Stella! What are you doing here? I came to say I'm sorry and to stop you from leaving. What are you doing here? I couldn't get on my plane. That's good. No, it's not. It means that, that staying here didn't feel right, but neither did leaving, so here I am, sitting on my suitcase, wondering where I belong. You belong with me. Joe, we tried this. Where are you going? It doesn't work. And nothing that you can say is gonna change it. I love you! What? I love you. I love that I remember what you look like with braces. I love that you'll spend an hour picking out bandanas with me. I love that the whole summer you were in the pool and you managed not to get your hair wet. I love that when anything good happens to me, the first person I want to tell is you. Joe. I don't care. I want everyone to know I love Stella Malone! Joe, if I say I love you too, will you be quiet? Yes. I love you too. So at number six I have Joe and Stella from Jonas and I feel like this one might come as a surprise to some of you just because I feel like I hardly ever get the chance to talk about how much I love Joe and Stella but I really do. And I might have a little bit of a bias towards them just because I'm currently rewatching Baby Daddy and also just because I love Joe Jonas but I don't care. I love them. They're super adorable. Joe and Stella are just the perfect best friends to lovers trope and I will admit that they did the whole will they won't they thing for a bit too long but it did make for such a great finale. Like that airport scene is definitely one of my favorite scenes from the show overall. I love how Stella has had feelings for him ever since they were little and then we start to find out that Joe likes her as well but they're both keeping it a secret and it's just super adorable. They are such good friends but they also have such a good connection which I just love to see. And just while we're on the topic of Jonas I wanted to mention that I do love Nick and Macy as well. I liked them a lot more when I was younger. When I was rewatching the show I found them to be a little bit annoying but I do still really like them but not as much as I love Joe and Stella. Yo también tengo una pregunta para hacerte a vos, a ver. ¿Sí? ¿Y para nosotros? ¿Va a haber otra oportunidad? No. No, hombre, nosotros no podemos estar juntos. Ándale, vamos. Vamos. Es que por más que lo intentes y lo quieras con todo tu ser y todo tu corazón, no lo puedes evitar. Simón, mírame a los ojos y decime en voz alta lo quiero escuchar que a vos no te pasa nada conmigo. Lo intento. O sea, intento, intento que no me pase. Pero... Number five, we have Simon and Amber from Sue Luna, and they're a ship that I feel like I've grown to love even more with time. I don't love how their story started out just because I feel like it sort of started out of spite. Like Amber didn't like how much Hasmin was improving with her singing with the help of Simon, and so then she decides to enlist his help to kind of take him away from Hasmin, but then they end up actually really clicking and getting along really well, which makes sense because they are such good skating partners. And then this is a big spoiler for Soy Luna, and so if you haven't finished season two yet, just skip ahead a little bit. I really liked how they showed their relationship in the second season, how they became friends at first and then Simon ended up helping Amber through her finding out that she wasn't soul and all of that and then they end up dating and it's just super adorable but it is very short-lived because then obviously Simon finds the scarf and realizes that it was Amber who burned down the rink and tried to frame his best friend for it and so yeah that wasn't a fun time. 
but I really liked their story in the second season. Although it was short-lived, I feel like it was still developed really well. What bugs me is the third season because the second season ends with Simon like as angry as I've ever seen him throughout the show. He's never been so mad at somebody in his life. And then season three starts up with him asking her to dance and I'm just like, what happened? Did we miss something? Like season two ended, he was very, very angry. And then season three starts and he's like, just kidding, I'm not as mad anymore. And it just made no sense. And I just felt like it was weird. Like, I don't know, I felt confused. And then it was hard for me to really love them in season three when I just felt like there was this big plot hole in the middle of their relationship that I felt like they never really explained very well. But then the more that season three went on, obviously we got so many good moments between them that I couldn't just not love them. The chemistry that they have in every scene is just top notch. Like that rose scene in the end of season three is just one of the best scenes from the show overall. I just wish that their story could have been handled a little bit better. But besides that, they're adorable and I love them a lot. Bueno, no sé si todo. Uh, ¿Qué te referís? Nosotros, Thiago. No hace falta que hablemos de eso ahora. Claro que tenemos que hablar. Tenemos que hablaros del beso. Mira, lo último que quería era lastimarte. No sé, Ana. Y sé que reaccioné mal. Te pido perdón por eso. Es que estaba con muchas presiones. Pero ya está. Quedó en el pasado. No, no, ¿cómo que ya está? Lo que hice no fue un capricho, no fue un, un juego. Te besé porque lo sentía. Pero, ¿por qué antes me dijiste que no sentías? Por miedo, ¿ok? Vos sos muy importante para mí, no puedo soportar la idea de perderte. Y por más que intente ocultarlo, no puedo alegar lo que siento. Sé que es tarde, sé que debería haberlo dicho antes, pero... No necesitas cambiar de opinión ni nada. Solo quería decirte algo. we have Elena and Diago from Bia. This is one that I didn't know I would have so high up on this list until I started making this list. For the longest time when I was watching the show, I didn't know who I shipped Elena with more, Victor or Diago, and I kept saying that I just need to see Elena with Victor in present day so I can know who I ship, and once I did, I just knew right away that Victor and Elena just weren't it for me. And it wasn't even just like when they were fighting, like even afterwards when they were all good, I just knew that the chemistry that they had really didn't compare to what Elena and Diago had. The whole friendship to lovers thing was done so well with Anna and Thiago and can I just say that this is like one of the best love triangles of all time? The whole dynamic of like her first love from high school who she was in a band with who she hasn't seen in over 10 years because he thinks that she's dead and then you have this amazing guy who's been her best friend for so long and really helped her when she was at her lowest and looking back I just feel like they told their story so beautifully and so if we do get a third season which hopefully we will they better be endgame or else I'll be really disappointed. Star, I'm so sorry. We need to get out of here! Stella? I'm going to Earth. Sorry, Mom! No! Stella! Ah! Oh. The Earth well closed a while ago. But the kid's still here. Star? Marco! What are you doing here? Well, I guess the same thing as you. Any idea what happens if we stay here? No. And I don't care. Because with or without magic, we belong together. So next up we have Star and Marco from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. And not to be dramatic or anything, but Starco is literally everything to me. Every time I think about them, they just fill me with so much joy because they're just so adorable. So if you're not familiar with the show, basically Star is this exchange student and Marco's family is the host family and so they're living together and they become best friends and then Star starts having feelings for Marco but we're not too sure how Marco feels until Star starts dating her ex-boyfriend again. And then we find out that Marco does reciprocate the feelings but they do the whole will they won't they for a bit until they finally get together by the end of the series. And I get asked a lot if I liked the ending to Star because I guess a lot of people hated it, but yeah, I loved it. I loved how their love was so strong that it brought the two worlds together. It was shocking, but I just felt like it was the perfect ending because it was about Star and Marco, and I just love them. This is incredible. Me iría contigo a otro planeta. ¿Qué estás diciendo? Ojalá nos pudiéramos ir a un sitio solos, los dos sin que nadie nos hiciera daño. 
No hace falta ir a ningún lado para eso. Tienes razón. Es que a nosotros no nos va a separar ninguna tormenta, ningún tifón, ni siquiera otro Big Bang. Porque lo nuestro es, es inevitable. So at number two, we have Bia and Manuel from Bia, and what can I say? I love them. They're not on my phone case for nothing. I will be honest though, I didn't ship them at first. Like I found them to be a little bit boring. They do the whole slow-mo love at first sight thing and then Manuel overhears Bia singing and falls in love with her voice. And then Bia overhears Manuel playing the piano and falls in love with his piano playing. And so it's like camp rock, but Bia. And then they finally meet and it's perfect and they're so in love and I'm just like, this is too perfect. And then it gets interesting when it becomes forbidden love. So it's just like Romeo and Juliet, their families hate each other and they're forbidden from seeing one another to the point where Manuel is literally kicked out of his house because he's dating Bia and his family is like, you cannot date her, leave. And it's just like, this is a lot for a kid's show, but okay. And then just the fact that everyone is against them being together, but their love is so strong that they're just like, no, our love's inevitable. We will be together. It's just so cute. And then in season two, when they're like dating in secret, and there's that one scene where they're like kissing to like avoid being seen and it's just so adorable or in season one when they're looking at the clouds together it's just one of my favorite scenes from the show overall they're so adorable and definitely my second favorite disney channel ship of all time <laughs> Sí, sí, sí. Vamos, seguime, seguime, seguime. Vamos bajo del árbol. Sí, 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 te quiero. Yo también te quiero, mi chico fresa. Mi chica delivery. ¿Sabes algo? ¿Qué? Ayer yo tenía una sensación muy rara de que algo iba a pasar, pero nunca me imaginé que era esto. Si no, me hubiera traído un paraguas o algo así. ¿Sabes una cosa? ¿Qué? Yo ya lo sabía. ¿Eh? Sabía que esta lluvia anunciaba algo importante. Era una señal. ¿De qué? De que tú y yo tenemos que estar juntos. Siempre juntos, Mateo. Para siempre. Coming in at number one, we of course have Luna and Mateo from Soy Luna, and for those of you who are sick of hearing me talk about Luna and Mateo, um, suck it up, because they're my favorites and I want to talk about them. Luna and Mateo meet and you can tell that there's just so much chemistry from the start, but Mateo is dating Amber at the time, that's kind of a big deal because she's like the daughter of who Luna's parents work for, and so they're kind of enemies at the beginning, which I think is mainly just because they're mad that they have feelings for one another, and then they start to develop a friendship and eventually end up getting together by the end of the first season. And then they go through a lot of ups and downs throughout the second and third season, Disney Channel really put them through it as well like their breakup that they had at the beginning and end of the second season and then the whole issue with Amelia in the third season which just still makes me mad to this day but they also have so many good moments as well like when they kiss in episode 40 of the first season or in episode 40 of season two when they became my favorite ship of all time which is when Mateo gets on stage and apologizes to Luna and sings one of the best songs from the series and then not to mention then he saves her life when she almost gets hit by a car and then their kiss in episode 41 was just so good as well and I also love in season three when they dance together to Vivas and Me. It's one of my favorite moments from the show. And of course their kiss in the rain is just iconic. Just the chemistry and genuine connection that these two characters have is just so special to me. I've never seen another ship like them on Disney Channel before and I'm not sure if another ship will ever top them for me. I mean, Soy Luna is my favorite show of all time so that probably has something to do with it but I just feel like their connection was so perfect and I just love them so much. And so that is my favorite Disney Channel ship of all time. Let me know down below which ship is your favorite. I can wait to read all about it. And just, I wanted to say thank you to you guys for wanting to 
to see this video. I wasn't sure if people would because most of my list is Disney Channel Latin American and I thought about making two different lists but I don't like doing that because I feel like that kind of invalidates the Latin American shows which I don't want to do and so yeah thank you to you guys for like wanting to see this content that really means a lot to me. Some other ships I would have wanted to include but aren't like Disney Channel original series would probably be Marinette and Adrian from Miraculous and Max and Lena from Find Me in Paris. I love them as well but they aren't like Disney Channel original series and so that's why I didn't include them on this list. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have to say for today at Cater Tots. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. No, it's fake date. Oh, it's fake date. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where did we get used to this? Tell me, how did we get here? Oh, sweet.